the large open spaces there which have a part in BBMP. At the same time, the most economically most important area does not fall into BBMP, that is your electronic city. Right? Your entire IT boom, the one that is providing Bangalore its image globally and a significant part of its economic uh, uh, thrust is left out of your city. Right? Now based on this, you say, all right, I'll break my, BB, my CDP only for the BBMP area, only the area marked green. Right? Then obviously, since I don't know the economic dynamics, I don't know what is happening within that, I end up with projections that are completely wrong. So this is, I'm making these projections, mind you, uh, very, very, very recently. My sole projection was 2010, with the census figure coming in at 2011. And you can see already it's going wrong. Right? Bangalore was, well, they projected for some reason at 80.15, the argument being that they are going to actually ensure that it doesn't grow in the south in its strongest place, one doesn't know why. But they decided that's not how it's going to be. Obviously, that did not happen, and you got a figure of, of growth which was much above what the BBMP said. On the other hand, MISO, they said, no, it's going to grow very, very rapidly. And uh, just one year before the census, they still got it wrong. ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ವ್ಯಾಪಕವಾಗಿ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಿದೆ ಅಂತ 
ಮತ್ತು ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಮಟ್ಟದಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಉಡುಪಿ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಕನ್ನಡ ಮೈಸೂರು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಇಂಥಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಆದರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಬಹುಸಂಖ್ಯಾತ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನ್ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಎಂದೂ ಕಂಡಿಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಕಾಣಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಕೊಪ್ಪಳದಂಥ ಊರೆಲ್ಲ ತೊಗೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಅದು ಒಂಥರ ಬಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಥರ ಆಗೋಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಅದು ಹಳ್ಳಿಯಿಂದ ಜನ ಬಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಬಸ್ ಹತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿಗೋ ಮುಂಬೈಗೋ ಹೊರಟು ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಥರದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸಿಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಥರ ಅದೊಂದು ಬಸ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಥರನೇ ಆಗೋಗಿದೆ ಅನ್ನೋಂಥದ್ದು ಹೇಳ್ತಿದ್ದರು ಇಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ವೈವಿಧ್ಯತೆ ಇರೋ ಊರುಗಳನ್ನು ನೀವು ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೊರಟಾಗ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ರೀತಿಲಿ ದೆಹಲಿಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಒಂದು ಯೋಜನೆ ಜಾರಿ ಮಾಡಿ ಅದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಇಂಪೋಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೊರಟಾಗ ಅದು ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಅನ್ನೋ ಅಂತ stage where we are looking at it is that is the very idea of the cd what is the area to be planned for itself runs into trouble and when you come up with the population projections that are wrong the population projection is at the heart of any cdp i am planning for the population if the population is higher i'm planning demand is that much higher or i'm expecting infrastructure at all estimates increase water whatever i want to do provide has to increase right so if those estimates go wrong all other estimates also go wrong right so the very core of the cdp itself you run into a problem a second element that happens is the question of protecting the poor the jn and urm says all right it's not just about growth growth is one element of it the second element is protecting the poor but the trouble here again is how do i find the poor right the cdp or the city development plan basically approaches it on the assumption that the poor are those living in slums urban poor live in slums and focus on slums and that inma- inmates would basically address the issues relating to the urban poor that if the urban poor are living only in the slums a uh, focus on the slums will ensure that i have taken care of the urban poor right so what we did was said is that true so we had a sample survey we did for the for major cities across karnataka and not just the jn and urm cities of bangalore and mysore right very quickly it was 4371 households it covered information on 18242 individuals right and it used asset indicators to uh, in the number of assets you own in a house or that certain types of assets you own in a house as an indicator of of the uh, of the wealth or the broad category of them and then looked at we d- worked out asset indicator then we defined what we call relative property poverty that is bottom 20% as being very poor the next 40 and divide into into basically uh, uh, f- uh, groups of 20% each right and we took the bottom 5% as a separate category within the 20% as being very poor now this is the broad picture you find of slums and other areas so where the poor live right so the one thing is that the slums do not account for the majority of the poor let alone all the poor they do not account for majority of the poor right uh, of course you have it did not even account for a majority of the very poor right these numbers are basically the proportion of the poor we took the population and said whether a household belongs to bottom 20% or the bottom 5% is very poor other poor is 5 to 5 to 20% right where does the bottom where do they fit in right by where do they live bulk of them were uh, living in areas other than slums or in the urban villages urban villages are the villages that have been recently brought into the city there also the has a concentration of poor but the slums do not account for the bulk of the poor and this is a variety of reasons because slums or recognized slums in bangalore have a history of development of slum development of slum uh, processes where they get permanent housing now we get permanent housing in a center of the city you get a certain value for that and there's a certain process that comes in with that which the poor who typically live in rented housing coming in from outside don't actually have that access right so when i focus on the slums the idea that the poor are in the slums itself is a problem even when dif- in identifying the poor now this is the proportion of the poor that live in slums urban villages or other areas sorry it would na no? where does it not come in it plus 7.5 rows for bangalore separate mysore separate rose total so in not defined they made it slum free but it's not poor free the poor are there since there are no slum the poor are there somewhere else only very good the idea that you
Uh, uh, your people who come, uh, say the migrants from Orissa working as, uh, as security and people like that, many of them, not all, but several of them come in the very poor category. Right? They do not live in slums because, uh, because that comes with the problem of Bangalore's transportation. Given the cost of transportation in Bangalore, I have to live in a place where I can walk to work. So I might live outside, I might live, so, uh, very, the very, very poor of course live on the, uh, or can be homeless as well. But even without that, I'm just living at various places near, a, or just outside a gated community, you'll find these colonies sometimes. Squatters, small areas within that. They're not officially, they're not called slums. Because slums have to be, de it's an official definition. And it's, therefore it gets access to certain things. And because it gets access to certain basic facilities, it ends up with a high, higher level where it becomes unaffordable for the very, very poor. Right. So apart from the slum, the Shivaji area, we can see that people are uh, laying, uh, you know, they're living on the streets. Yes, the that will not fit into, that will just be other areas. All those who live. Yes. That's right. They will not. They are not slums. Now, so which is which is why the basic Jain and you are a assumption that if I take care of slums, I'm taking care of the poor is very weak. The slum is defined uh, basically. I'm, we are just taking the official when a, they categorize a slum. They put a certain condition, but there's an administrative process also involved. There's lots of difficulties there, etc. Involved, but these numbers suggest that it is not just the administrative difficulty that's at, that's the problem. That the very idea that the poor will live only in slums is itself a problem. And uh, in many functions, the garment workers who are just about the poverty line or little above that or, or on the borderline of the poverty line. Many of them uh, live in these colonies with shared toilets, areas like that, which are not technically called slum, are not declared slums within that. And a slum also typically has to have a certain number of poor households. Isolated poor households here and there don't get categorized as a slum because the territory that you're defining. Right. No, what happens is, yeah, but typically what we are seen in other surveys, not in this, but in other surveys, is that the migration occurs by I come and get in, uh, I live with a family member for six months until I get a job. Then I set up a new household in which I allow other family members to come in or sometimes cast members, sometimes just people from my village. We did a survey of, of uh, garment workers, women uh, workers in Bangalore and found that 40% of them lived in what we call collective households. That is, households that had members other than the immediate family. Right? And 10% of them had friends living with them. So what happens is because we don't have any state support for migration, our urbanization process works through the family. Whereas most of the other places we would have housing for the poor, etc., built in, temporary housing for the poor. But the poor come in, stay there for some time, develop and move. We don't have any such system. So whatever migration takes place, not, not other states, other countries. Like for, for instance, even the U.S. when they had this whole migration from, uh, from uh, the uh, from Europe, East Europe, even in the early part of the last century, they had mechanisms to ensure the they got access to certain basic facilities provided by the state. Right? We don't have any such uh, system, so the whole thing works like our politics, like our business through the family. Right? The family becomes the central institution in everything that we do uh, within that. Okay, fine. Uh, right. Okay, uh, this is okay. okay. Another time, actually, the question came up. I think the lady there mentioned how you could have people with uh, relatively better off. This is uh, not you don't have anybody from the top twenty percent, but you do have a sprinkling from the uh, from the sixty to eighty percent, and a little more from the forty to sixty uh, percent kind of uh, categories. So basically, the idea that the slums have only the very poor is not true. Less true in Mysore than in Bangalore, but not even in Bangalore, it's not true, right? So they do not even account for the in terms of looking at in terms of, of the type of facilities provided. You will find that, for instance, if you take a sewage line as the best form of sewage facilities available, you find urban villages are actually worse off than slums, right? 
so you essentially have a pattern where they, basically the point here for our purpose today is just to say that the identification of slums with uh, this is not entirely valid right and i'll just go through this quickly otherwise then you come to this if you want to translate that or, okay the uh, this, then you come to the next stage we look now at the identification of of the problems within the cdp now if you go from the cdp to the projects you clearly find uh, in the choice of projects a clear bias towards large scale infrastructure the uh, the jnn urm consists of four major components uig or the urban infrastructure and governance bsup or basic services for the urban poor UID SSMT or the Urban Infrastructure Development Scheme for Small and Medium Towns, or the IHSDP, which is Integrating Housing and Slum Development Program. Now, clearly, you see uh, two distinct biases. One is it is UIG centric. Bulk of the investment, a very substantial proportion of the investment, is in UIC. Over two thirds of the investment, or nearly two thirds of the investment, I should say, is in uh, is in UIG, is in urban infrastructure. Out of that, the Bangalore centricity is clear. Bulk of that investment is in Bangalore. A vast, a vast, uh, substantial majority of that investment is in Bangalore, right? So this is a distinct feature. When you talk about the old plan, we say, okay, we have the basic CDP. Within CDP, I can pick up certain projects. But actually, what I'm doing is I'm picking up only infrastructure projects. And these infrastructure projects are already being considered from various other programs. So what happens here is that you have the JNN URM, which is where you're supposed to look at the CDP and do it. You also have another shelf of projects that has been made by the state government using various other categories, right? I take uh, those projects that from there that will fit into JNN URM, and I get JNN URM funding for that, right? So the idea that I define a, a CDP and from that determine what is the priority of plans fixed does not work. I just have a shelf of projects, and I see which, how many of them can be fitted into this central scheme, which is willing to fund us so generously. Right. So where this makes a difference is really in terms of the UID SSMT, where you'll find in, the, in terms of infrastructure, the districts that we saw were rapidly urbanizing that is your Dakshin Kannada and Udupi, get left out. They're left out of the main uh, program because they are uh, they are not, uh, only Mysore and Bangalore are mentioned in the main uh, main program. But new ID SSMT, they again get left out because they're not the worst off. <laughs> right? So in terms of, of urban infrastructure, it gets left out. In terms of housing, it's, the situation is even more dramatic, with the entire coast being left out. Right? The IHSDP is the equivalent of the BSUP for the, for the slum development program for the small towns. And there you find the entire coast does not have a single project, right? because it falls between two stools. So the point one is making is that you have a problem at the first stage, urbanization to city development plan. You have a problem from city development plan to the choice of projects as well. Right? Uh, OK. Uh, the second uh, element, you want to translate that? No. Okay. Now, within those choice of projects, you again have a bias towards mobility, towards transportation, right? And within that bias, you find a great, greatly, this is of course Bangalore, but you'll see here that bulk of the investment is in transportation, and bulk of that in investment in transportation is actually in higher end transportation, high cost transportation, right? 